Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. These stitches still have not dissolved, but today's video is brought to you by Pat Hopkins. Woo! Now, this is the 2023 I Feel Really Old edition of one of my favorite collaborations of all time. This is the Record Store Day edition. I'll read you the hype sticker real quick. Ultra heavy, dark, and progressive, moving into a completely new dimension. Gatefold 2LP with 16 page libretto with liner notes by Kim, uh, uh, Kim Thiel of Soundgarden, recorded in Seattle by Randall Dunn, mastered by Mel Detmer. 2022 Vinyl Cut by Matt Colton at Metropolis. Limited RSD release contains 18x24 full color poster. Lava Red Vinyl Southern Lord Records. So, yes, Sun and Boris Alter. Now, just look at that cover. So sick. Now getting two of the loudest bands to come together on a collaboration is nothing new, but this to me for a long time was one of the heaviest records I owned. But the only reason I even knew this existed was I had heard the Grim Road demos. I really didn't ever get that much into Sun's White, uh, like especially White 2. I need to revisit that. It's been a very long, it's honestly been like since 2005 when this monolith came out that is Black 1. Now, still aside from the Grim Rogue demos, this and Monolith and Dimensions are my favorite records that are just, like, Sun. Yes, there are some collaborators on here, but it's a little bit different. Like, Malefic from Zatzer, Rest from Leviathan, uh, etc. Maximum volume yields maximum results, but I remember, like, letting... The good old Skeleton Proof Tanks folks hear this record for the first time. I always love the artwork. And my bass player was kind of the only person that got it. He actually went to see them with me at the time. And uh, the next time, my drummer went with me because he got really into drone and stuff. But when I saw, like, I've seen Sun four separate times now. One time with Val, one time with Thrones, which is a Joe Preston band. It was ridiculous. Another time with Eagle Twin. But I saw Boris this one time with Torch. And I was cool with the staff at the First Unitarian Church. Back in like 2000, might have been 2008 or two, yeah, 2008, because Torch's Meanderthal had just came out. And, uh, not had just came out, but it had came out. They were like touring on that record. And uh, I remember Andrea Black was doing merch for them, because I was at Dude Fest like two days before the Philly show. And uh, I just remember uh, seeing her at both shows. But anyways, I had to take a piss. So I walked downstairs and during sound check, it's Boris doing sound check. And everybody from every other band is kind of gathered around. So like real quick, I go and take a piss. And I run out and I don't immediately leave. I just act like I'm supposed to be there and... John's just doing his thing, and he doesn't care anyway. So, 
it was the loudest sound check I have ever heard in my fucking life. They were, the gong, a gong in an empty, it was, the room was empty. This was before the show started. It was just, like, Torch, I forget what other band, but, like, there was barely anyone, maybe Kaesa, but there was, like, barely anyone in the room at all. It was so fucking loud. But Sun, the one time, they started throwing wine bottles, and that was a little gnarly. It got legitimately, like, scary when the person next to me got hit in the face by a wine bottle. But it definitely allowed you to smoke a blunt upstairs in a church chapel, which is fucking awesome. But here is Alter in all of its heavy glory. Because if I turn this up at maximum volume... Uh, I'll just be talking over myself, and it still kind of feels weird to talk because of these stitches. But you have Etna, NLT, The Sinking Bell, Blue Sheep, Akuma no Kuma, Fried Eagle Mind, and my favorite track on this record, not just because of the title, but Blood Swamp. I actually wanted to name a bit like a band blood swamp as but it never happened it, but it was i always thought it was too simple of a name but it really would have worked for what i had in my mind which is now frog mist but frog mist already existed but only in a fictional setting but this vinyl sounds amazing it looks amazing but the songs that exist within, you have to understand this is during a time where Boris was thinking a lot more just outside of the drone box. I mean, that's, you can hear it in like heavy rocks and shit, but like, and all the way back like though, but when I first heard Pink, I remember just being like, huh, like, this is cool. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I liked it automatically, but, like, it wasn't because it was, like, overly devastatingly heavy. It was just a good album. Like, Amplifier Worship. It's a great record by Boris. And it's also e exactly what it says. It's, it's heavy as fuck. Boris, I love, Sun, I love, so you get the two together, and you really can't go wrong, and it's cool hearing Sun with drums, like, and anytime Sun has, like, vocals, I always feel that it's kind of special, and I, I like it a lot, especially on Black One. Black One, the vocals are amazing, and anytime Attila works with Sun doing vocals, it's like no offense to Mayhem, but his work with Sun, I feel, is just like on a whole other fucking level of insane. He doesn't even sound remotely human on like uh, pretty much everything he's ever recorded with Sun. And I'm pretty sure he worked on White 2. But, oh, I'm at the end of the record. At the end of side A. Of the Blood Swamp on. Or add this to the second LP. I always forget which way these caricatures go, though. On the CD, it was just printed like on a digitat. Because uh, the CD version that I had back in the day. I got this the day it fucking came out. I was like a fanboy. When it came to the uh, sun at the time. Boris too. Like, Boris like over time. Like I, I mean. It's a little hard to catch up now. But like I was, I was a big like fanboy. For a little bit. I still love their music, but, whoa.
you got to kind of, uh, it's, it's one of those bands I'm kind of picky with the releases that I really like. And with Sun, like, I can't express my love for the Grim Rogue demos enough. It's pretty much Earth 2 on steroids, but, like, I mean, they even have a song called Dylan Carlson. If you don't know who Dylan Carlson is, you don't know Drone. Um, but he's the dude from Earth. He's the guy that gave Kurt Cobain the, um, thing that did the thing. Because I can't say the words because of YouTube. But you get this amazing write-up here. By, uh, KM. And it's really cool. It, like, gives you just, like... Oh shit! Wait, I didn't. I I never had a bonus edition with a Soundgarden. Oh, is this a person from Soundgarden that wrote this? But yeah, Joe Preston is a regular in the Alter Constellation. He contributes vocal lead on Akuma, no uh, Akuma no Kuma. Invoking the Devo corporate anthem, Steve Moore plays the trombone. This is the only other song on the album that rocks with the viscerial usage of drums. Oh, by the way, Akuma no Kuma means evil bear in Japanese. That's fucking cool as shit. And Ursa Mala in, uh, Celestial Latin for you astrologers. But it's really fucking cool. But, and finally, congratulations on pro uh, possessing the vinyl copy of Alter, which includes the bonus prelude LP epic track. Her lips were wet with venom. Wait, does it? Huh. I, I guess that, I don't know. Maybe that was a different press. But, uh. Are you being called to worship? No. Are you being called to an altar? No. Open the, open the album? You're being altered one. Hitting your head sucks. I apologize. Like, I can't even read a goddamn sentence some days. Always love the artwork. And photographs and shit. They're just very well done. I really hope Blood Incantation plays those Tennessee Caves. Whenever they do that Time Wave Zero tour. Just for their sake. Or even a Spectral Voice tour. They should do a fucking show there. If I had the money, I'd fucking fly to that. But this photo, like, I always thought, I was like, oh, like, maybe they just did some West Coast dudes. Like, back then, it was kind of hard to find out. Like, you'd have, well, not really, you'd have to go on MySpace. But this always reminds me of the cover, uh, the cover of the Kyoten compilation, but without the monsters. I might even grab the LP real quick and compare. Because there's, uh, there's a bunch of other shit going on. Yeah, it's way different. I don't know why my brain was like, oh, they look the same. I love that. Picture's fucking great. And this track is so goddamn good. Just gorgeous layout. But yeah, this always, well, not always, but uh, since getting the LP version, I was like, whoa, it reminds me of like a natural version of the Kyoto art. I, I know it's a pure coincidence, but I just thought that was cool.
but with Sun and Boris together on altar, you get Sonic Excess in its purest form, to quote the mighty crowbar. Like, the drone is as heavy as, as ever. I fucking love it. But, Again, Alter by Son of Boris. This was originally released in, I'm pretty sure it was 2006 was the original release. And I can already feel a vibration. It's not even close to maximum volume. And you can like feel it in your chest. I fucking love it. And I know some of you are probably like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but seriously, it's awesome. But Greg Anderson, Asato, Steve O'Malley, Takashi, and Wata featuring Mel Detmer, Randall Dunn, Bill Herzog, Steve Moore, Joe Preston, Rex Ritter, Jesse Sykes, Troy Swanson, Kim Thiel. Will Wancher and Tuss and I can't pronounce your last name, I apologize. And it's fucking awesome. There's so much just heavy fucking tunes in here. The art's great. If you're a fan of heavy music, you need to get into Sun and Boris together on Alter. To me, a modern drone classic. you've never heard it, is totally worth listening to. Thanks again, Pat, and thanks again to you maniacs for watching. You fucking rule. Listen to Sun, stay heavy, Hails.